building a regional biosecurity network will enhance the biosecurity capacity of each of the participating countries more effectively than if they operate in isolation. Because the network is designed to create a shared protocol and shared data to enable the partners, the collaborators, to help each other to respond to biosecurity issues. So for example, if there is a pest incursion in one location, the neighbors will be warned and they can prepare. What we want to do is share the research results from the project with policymakers so that where we have learned that, oh, it's more effective, for example, to have a high risk site surveillance, that they can evaluate that and see it's a priority and provide more support for effective biosecurity response. The goal of the Bliss Survey is to get all information related to the forest health, including the tree status, tree species, tree age, type of forest, and the name location. And the most important is the insect, fungi, and uh, other organisms that live in uh, forested places. As a bliss way, we are focuses on finding and primary linearly uh, identification as many uh, pet species as possible in the forested area over a short period of time. The bliss survey also focuses on collecting as uh, many pet samples as possible, then bring them back to laboratory for identification, and then build the pet list for that location. Diagnostics are essential component in the surveillance because without accurate and correct uh, diagnosis, it will result in diagnostic errors. Then it will lead to um, application of uh, incorrect uh, measures, uh, control to prevent the spread of the insects. We can get the information for the database on the insects from the trap. We have to get that information to develop to the past quarantine past in the future. This information is important for our country because the database of the uh, past form trap is uh, the basic in Laopedia and the future we can develop this database to, to make regulation for past quarantine in the forest product. We have a plantation estate of acacias and eucalyptus. It's now exceeding 7 million hectares. The 7 million, it's producing a very significant wood supply, very significant development opportunity because of the economic activity. It's very significant to income. Here in Vietnam, it's very focused on smallholders. In other countries in the region, it's, it's more industrial scale planting, but it's quite significant to the income of a very large number of people. So there's a lot at stake. Because of climate change and because of increased mobility of people in the region, more cargo, more trade, more mobility, the incidence of pest and disease outbreak has, has gone up significantly. So that estate, which Australia helped to create, is now increasingly vulnerable to pests and pathogens. Vietnam has high diversity of forestry species with potential pests and um, disease. So according to the uh, investigation of uh, Forest Protection Research Center in the last 10 years, around 20 species of pests and disease were recognized as a new or emerging threat to the uh, forestry sector. And it's worried that uh, it's likely, it's, uh, the further outbreak is likely to occur. So increased uh, movement of uh, pests from region to region, from country to country. And the situation of pests in DZ nowadays is becoming more and more complicated and the damage from pests and disease is become more serious compared to the past. Most of the plantation resource in Southeast Asia are Australian species. They are acacias and eucalyptus. 
And because they are sharing the same species, the pests can move throughout the region. So for example, by strengthening biosecurity here in Vietnam and in Southeast Asia, it's beneficial also to Australia because those, if the pests are arrested here, it's a protection before the border for Australia. Information on pests will be used as a basis for species uh, checklist. From the information, we will know what we have in the country and what we want to keep out of the country. And this information will assist the Department of Agriculture as the country's national plant protection organisation to conduct phytosanitary measures. There are risks associated with increasing movement of commodities, whether internationally or within the country. We do not have much information on forestry pests that can become aggressive and harm our forests. So having the right uh, information and biosecurity measures in place, informed decisions can be made to minimise uh, impacts of outbreaks. Biosecurity should be uh, connecting for the uh, capacity building on the staff human leases because if we have improved uh, our increase the knowledge in our staff they can use the technique from capacity building to their working in the future and more 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 at the working in our country. Hopefully in the future Southeast Asian member country will have closer and stronger cooperation together to share information on the pet management, especially in uh, exotic pet uh, species. I would like to see exactly what the project is aiming for, a, a uniform and coordinated surveillance network so that every airport in the region, every port, every border crossing has high-risk site surveillance and all of that data is centralized and analyzed in real time so that if there is a pest that arrives, whether it arrives from Australia or Africa or wherever it comes from, people will know this quickly and they can respond quickly and they can protect the forest estate.